with the 16th pick in the 2013 NFL Draft. The Buffalo Bills select E.J. Manuel, quarterback, Florida State. <laughs> Mastroli Passing Academy, PassingCamp.com. EJ came down, his agent sent him down here to South Florida to work with a program, XPE Sports, and it's run by a gentleman by the name of Tony Villani out of Delray Beach. And Tony and I had known each other for years. I've done some stuff quarterback-wise. I've trained with Tony before when I was playing and preparing professionally for the NFL. Uh, Tony said you have the opportunity to get together with EJ and interview and possibly work together. Uh, between Chris Carter and Tony. Uh, spent some time, I spent about two days with EJ, got to know him a little bit better, we worked out. I think it was a very good fit, and it all started at that point, we started our training. Chris Carter is involved, yeah, he actually coaches the receivers and mentors the receivers that come down, so it's an excellent program. It gives them the, the kind of, you know, you get the receiver training, the quarterback training, for myself and then Tony really works on the explosive movements he works on fundamentals you know getting the guys combine ready so I think the combination of the three just is an excellent fit across the board I mean I provide for that quarterback that classroom and on-field training and fundamentals and then Chris provides the receivers the high-level receivers that he gets used to throwing the top guys that are coming out of college and then Tony obviously is going to make them run faster jump higher and just be more explosive athletes during that time of testing. I think EJ is a very, uh, he's a very mature individual. He was just very motivated coming out to prove that there was more there as a quarterback, as a guy that could play at the next level. I think that with my experiences at the NFL level, college level, and the things that I've learned over the years through some very elite coaches, guys that have coached Pro Bowl players, and then the study that I've done, you know, EJ really wanted to find a guy and find a system and a program that was going to help him believe that he would get to the number one position. We set that goal. We wanted to be the first quarterback taken in the draft. We believed it, forget what everybody else said, because he was ranked ninth or 10th on a lot of the charts coming out. And the focus was a step-by-step -step process. So what we did was, the first three weeks, we really concentrated on preparing for the Senior Bowl. So it was a complete program that we generated within three weeks that was going to prepare him to be at his absolute best going into that Senior Bowl. And it was a combination, obviously, of going out to the field and breaking down those fundamentals, getting together and really breaking down the steps, step by step, not just putting a bunch of drills out there for an individual to do to become more explosive, but really identifying EJ's weakness. And I think once I started to hone in on on what he needed the most help on. That took watching all of his game films from last year, breaking that player down, getting on a personal level, and then understanding the way that he processed information and learned. So leading up to the Senior Bowl, EJ asked me to come up and got a chance to kind of be there and, and, and analyze his performance each day and see how things were. Uh, he was one of six quarterbacks that went to play for the team. And uh, you know the things that we really focused on was, like I said, getting on that personal level and understanding basically the test before he took it. So everything from what he was going to wear to what was going to be expected during the meetings to what he was going to bring with them to the meetings, you know, how to approach a meeting. He was good with all those things. All I did was try to kind of reiterate a lot of those little things and take the experiences that I had and provide it to him. Then we also took back and broke down kind of the playbook that he would have, focus on a lot of things that he would see, and then we started to go back and work on the basic fundamentals. We're going to work on under center things. We're going to work on three and five step drops, seven step drops and incorporating that. And we're also going to work on a lot of the different angle throws that he was going to make and be required to do at that level. So it was just a comfort zone and a setting that you've got kind of your swing coach there with you and you can execute, you know, during the field and then come back after and talk a little bit more about 
you know, what did you expect? What did you see? It was, I think it was just kind of a comfort level for him as well. Going into that Senior Bowl and him gaining that MVP performance, I think we felt good. It's times when we just kind of clicked on the field. We just, both of us kind of knew this was a right setting. And I think that's important for an athlete-coach relationship, that you've got to feel comfortable and you've got to be able to trust that guy, that he's going to put you in the best position to succeed. Um, I think after that Senior Bowl, we just kind of turned our focus right to the combine and felt like this was going to be a long-term commitment. We really didn't talk about the pro day. We didn't focus on anything else down the line. It wasn't a big kind of smoke and mirror show. When he and I got together, it was strictly hard work and that's what I kind of look for. You know, I let the marketing and everything else speak for itself, but when you get with a guy like him, you just want to get into an area that's nobody else is around. Your full focus is on that training. You put your, you put your personal feelings and thoughts as a coach aside and you completely focus on what's best for this athlete. And that's the approach I typically take. If I put all my thought process and all my work and, and everything else into what he needs to get done during that time, I think it's going to make for a successful recipe for him. Well, you know, obviously the first step was our goals. We had to set these goals in front of us. You know, Senior Bowl MVP, excellent performance. We checked that one off. Okay, next we went to the combine and he said he wanted to go in there and he wanted to go in there and have an excellent performance, throw the ball well, execute. So there's a whole different mindset and thinking. You know, I knew what was going to be expected, what kind of routes they were going to run, what all the throws, the questions they were going to ask him. I had already prepped him prior to starting that combine to exactly know what he was walking into because he wasn't going to get hit with a test or he wasn't going to get hit with some type of throw that he was going to have to make. We, re we went through the routine, we broke things down. We did a couple of psychological approaches that I think was very beneficial for him, the way that we broke things down from the mental side to make him relax. And it wasn't just going out there and throwing rep after rep. It was identifying what he had to do, but mentally going to a place that he just felt comfortable in sync and in rhythm. And that's basically he was able to shut everything off, shut all the outside distractions and perform on that football field that day in Indianapolis. One thing I liked about what you did today is I saw a lot more consistency in your footwork. I can tell you've really been grinding and working away at that. Right. So tell us where you've been training and what you've been doing, right. kind of just refining those, those finer points of your game. Definitely. I'm training in Boca Raton at uh, XPE Sports, and the uh, speed coach is Tony Villani, and my quarterback coach is Kim Astroli. Uh, we've really been honing in on my footwork, mm -hmm. uh, getting my hips and my shoulders in line so I can be accurate and have you know even more, powerful, or more pop on my ball and uh, just extend my hands and throw it to a spot. Yeah. So we had an excellent performance, tested extremely well, the buzz was high. So next we had to now switch our gears to the pro day. He came back, got right back to work, and what we focused on for those next few weeks were we wanted to start to put a script together. But I wanted to make sure this was going to be an outside setting at Florida State on his own home field. And I wanted to put together something that was going to really accentuate what he did well as a quarterback at the next level, show his movement skills, show that he, was, he had the ability to drive the ball outside at all different angles. Yeah, I think if you like E.J. Manuel, you like what you saw today, Paul. 54 scripted throws. His private coach, Ken Mastroli, I thought did a really nice job highlighting not only his arm strength, but his movement skills. So an awful lot of bootleg, play action, on the move. Paul, he's got a big arm. And that he was going to show what type of person he was, the character. I think that combination with what his agents did just really helped him climb the charts as a person and as a football player. They knew they were getting a franchise guy when he stepped out on that field. And that was the focus. Not so much we had to focus on, hey, EJ, you've got the best footwork, or your alignment's correct, or your balance is right. Because in the past, I've saw those little things, but I wanted to provide him with the complete package of being receptive, strong handshakes, being that guy that people could put on the billboard as the face of their franchise for whichever NFL team was going to take him. We went up there with the intentions that we were just going to go out there and execute a flawless pro day, obviously. The things that I put together and we rehearsed for about three to four days before, you know, it was a little bit messy in the beginning, but once you kind of smooth things out. We got the right receivers in place. Um, we decided and agreed on the things that were going to be his strengths and what we wanted to show during that 70 play workout. I think we both felt comfortable, comfortable and we walked away with the, with the feeling that this was going to be a great day that next day. Uh, we rehearsed it and did a little walk through the day before 
And when we got out there, you know, EJ was sitting in the end zone and he was kind of looking off in the distance and I could just tell he had that kind of killer instinct in his eye. And as soon as I saw that and it was almost time to go, it just flicked the switch. I was ready, you know, things were just kind of moving quickly and I'll tell you the pace and the way that I think that I had set it up to keep him moving, to keep him kind of moving back and forth across the field. You know, I think it impressed a lot of scouts that the way he went up there, I think you really saw his stock start to really shoot up the boards during after that pro day workout. I think people would say it's crazy to say, yeah, right, you didn't really believe that he would be. But I felt very strongly about just his personality, just because I've had the opportunity to walk through those NFL doors, to be in that locker room, to be in a training camp, and to really understand what those guys are looking for, it's that chemistry. It's always said that it just needs one team to really fall in love with you and to find that you're going to be that guy that take the next step for that franchise. And I think in a, in a league that happens and evolves so quickly and changes, I think EJ embodies all those things that you're looking for in an NFL type quarterback. The guy that's not gonna just work a nine to five job, a guy that's gonna get up and maybe get up at six o'clock in the morning and he's gonna work until all hours of the night. A guy that's gonna put a team on his back, a guy that's gonna walk into a locker room and can win a locker room over whether they win or they lose. If there's adversity or things are just going in a great direction, I think that EJ has those intangibles. Um, the things that we were able to get out of him or I was able to get out of him was just really fine tuning and tightening up. I knew what it would take to get him to that level and to just kind of paint that final masterpiece for him. And I think all those things combined and what we did, it just took off and I believed it. You know, coming up to that draft day or the night of the draft, I mean, I really felt strongly that he was gonna be the guy to be picked first. I think that anybody can teach drills. They could be successful in teaching drills and getting someone's footwork better or doing core strength training or doing any type of exercises. But really understanding the athlete and seeing how they operate, function, how they learn. Can you break down the position or can you break down the movements and really identify where their inefficiencies are and correct those things? And I think that it's true. It's like a, gol a great golf instructor. There's a lot of guys that do it, but how many of those guys can truly take a swing apart, teach it, and then go back to 100 miles an hour again and groove that same muscle memory back so that it's effective on that field. And I think I have the ability to do that. It's proven through youth, high school, college, and now professional level. The first quarterback taken is not Geno Smith. It is not Matt Barkley. It's not even the quarterback that the coach, current coach of the Buffalo Bills coached in college. It's EJ Manuel. It's a personalized setting. It's not all about myself or the smoke and mirrors. It's more about that athlete and what am I going to give that athlete. When an athlete steps into my program, it's a full personalized program to understand and find out what he needs the most in the smallest amount of time. And then we go to work on it. If we have to step away and understand how he functions and we break the movements down, so it's not only physical, it's mental, it's psychological, it's processing the information because this game is all about the mental angles as much as it is the physical preparation and physical dominance out there. At the quarterback position, you've got to be ready for anything. And I think that reflecting back on the adversity that I've been through, the ups and downs, I'm just going to relay that back to the player and help him so that when he takes that same path, I've already paved it for him. He just needs to walk it. This is a program where the guys that want to seriously come in and train are going to step away better in a short amount of time. But I think it's more that personalized setting. Each kid that comes through that door, I know their name, I know everything that I can about them. I want to know how they think, how they react, what's their family life like. Okay, because I think that just makes for a better learning opportunity. For you to step through the door, train, and then walk away is not really beneficial and it's not gratifying for me. It's making each kid better that is really serious about the program and really wants to learn and take their game to that very next level. Uh, for the guys that are coming out, just the program. You're not gonna find another setting across the country that you're gonna get the quarterback training, not only from the field, but from video analysis, from breakdown psychologically, to the walkthrough, through the start of your all-star game, up through the combine, 
your pro day, and everything that's going to be involved. So what I do is I take the pressure and all the thinking off that athlete, and then I put all those things together for him, breaking each thing down. So I'm gonna take you back to what made you successful in the first place, how you got to the point that you are at right now. We're gonna go back and break those things down. We're gonna identify your weaknesses in a short amount of time, but you're gonna feel fluid, you're gonna feel confident. That combined with the explosive training, the numbers across the board, year in and year out, by Tony Villani and XPE, and now teamed up with Chris Carter, working with the receivers, you're getting the best of both worlds. So you're gonna get that on-field physical and fundamental training, but you're gonna be, you're gonna have the ability to work out in South Florida with some of the best receivers across the country. Guys that are gonna be first round picks and guys that you will be throwing to on Sundays. So that combination in that intense environment and then stepping away and learning at the same time is just providing the setting or the training environment. It's gonna be the most successful for that athlete.